What is RippleNet? RippleNet is a messaging platform that makes use of XRP via a single API application programming interface. Just think of it as a connection between computers. This is carried out over a private ledger used in RippleNet's ODL. Why use a private ledger? S simple, so that the privacy of banks can be maintained. As a side note here, it is important to remember that the XRPL rules state that one state is valid and immutable. I will also explain why a private ledger is not a bad thing and in fact, is more positive than there not being a private ledger at all. The most important takeaway from this intro into RippleNet is that it is a messaging platform. So if the rest is a blur, just remember that, RippleNet is a messaging platform and nothing else. So we know XRP, we know RippleNet, but what is the XRP ledger? The XRP ledger is the software, utilizing a consensus protocol, set of instructions, in which designated servers, called validators, come to an agreement on the order and outcome of XRP transactions, which take place, every 3 to 5 seconds. Just a quick one, I am sure that most people are aware that no more XRP will be made, but it is a good segue into invariant checking. So, all XRP that could ever exist has already been created. It has set amounts released from escrow over time. The transaction rules are deterministic and there is no way to create more XRP than already exists. It exists. It is impossible. And now to see what happens on the XRP ledger. Invariant checking, what is it? Well, it allows us to check for violations all whilst not allowing any corruption on the public ledger state, to take place. After the transaction takes place, only the view will have you can see the total change from the sum or net, and that it doesn't increase the supply or violate any other invariants that we do not want to be violated. If there was an issue, then the results will show that the transaction violated this and it would not be valid. This can prevent most attacks on the network from even being able to take place. Can easily identify and fix issues with invariant checking. Transaction order essentially resolves the double spend problem. This is done by applying a simple hash function, but it doesn't resolve the problem in full. So, instead it is executed as a unit, which resolves this issue. This, pro this process is known as consensus. A voting system through nodes on whether or not to include transactions in that current round. If the transactions execute correctly and are seen before the round begins, then they will include it in that current round or unit. All the node operators have to do is defer a transaction one round later, five seconds later, if there is a disagreement between validators. No honest participant would defer a payment more than once if valid. As you must have seen it at least the round before. This resolves any settlement within rounds and maintains honest participants. So back to Ripped. We know that the settlement of payments is possible, even without the use of XRP, with the only need for XRP being if it is moved onto the public ledger from the private ledger. The ability to check and ascertain the validity of the payment among a private group would not even require a permanent state change on the public ledger. Public ledger. This is why having a private ledger for institutional banks is a good thing as they instead, now require the use of XRP for settlement, as opposed to surface, API invariant checking. Not only that, but the private ledger would also have to use and source XRP from somewhere in order to bridge the gears. Knock knock, in comes Ripple's on-demand liquidity hub. The banks are the operators of these private ledgers. These validators on the private ledger, banks, are required to multi-sign transactions on the public ledger. That is how it is possible to have one asset on both a public and private ledger. ledger. This has the additional benefit of cutting transaction fees and increasing scalability. We know that Ripple launched TripleNet an on-demand liquidity service in a private ledger. So all those that were afraid of there being a private ledger can now see that it is in fact a great thing, as it actually enforces the requirement of XRP to enable ADL. Well, is forking possible? It saddens me to even bring this one up but no. Just know. The requirement of XRP for a private ledger to function show that the all state has not changed. A fork relies on changing protocols and code over time. 
What exactly is the differentiation between the XRP that is RPL and private ledger? None. Exactly. Remember how I stated earlier that the XRPL rules state that one state is valid and immutable? Well there you go. There must be one set of rules for this to be possible. No fork. Beyond that the asset class XRP itself would have to change in the whole fundamental system of the XRPL, which is not possible. Why? It is a decentralized platform. They do not have the permission to just change the public blockchain. When we first spoke about RippleNet, we referred to it as a messaging platform. The sending of settlement information. Even with all the extra background info, it is still, most core essence, a messaging platform. Price. Yup, save the best for last. We have a fixed supply of XRP, a rapidly increasing use case and payments infrastructure, greater adoption and still, price is unaffected. It is the same way that positive news articles and deals made by Ripple can become deals made by Ripple can become public and not yield any significant price movement. Banks have not yet received the clarity to carry out the sales and custody of crypto, to the point where it requires the merging of a public and private ledger, to carry out the multi-sign feature, to even allow this to be a possibility. Can you see now how RippleNet is movements to the public ledger? How the technology discussed through invariant checking and the functionality of the XRPL would be applied to a private ledger. How an option and regulation will bring about this merging of a public and private ledger. Beyond this, the volume of XRP held by banks is most likely for the most part, loaned from Ripple. Not bought from the market, loaned. Hence why Ripple has had a need to buy XRP back from the open market. Due to its ever-growing current and future demand. So, to summarize. The existence of a private ledger proves that the flip of a switch moment exists. Beyond that, the technology fundamentally requires a this flip of a switch moment in time when liquidity can finally start flowing from the private to public ledger of the XRPL. We know price won't move until the corridors are live in banks, the private operators, are allowed to sell and custody crypto, as opposed to just using the API aspects of the XRPL's invariant checking consensus model. Learn the technology and you will see that most of the illogical fears are in fact impossible. Forking, buyback, etc. I know this was a long one, that's what she said, worth the effort, that's what she said. Snoot out.